So you already know from year 12 how you find areas. Um, so really this exercise that comes up in the textbook here is just an opportunity to pull together all of the different things about integration that we know so far. So when I've said to you there's nothing new that we're learning about integration, there is nothing new we're learning about integration. We're now just going to be applying it to questions. So this is, this is really where it all kind of comes, comes as one thing. So I've said you're already familiar with the idea that the definite, in, that definite integration gives you the, the signed area bound between the curve and the x-axis. What do I mean signed area, do you think? So when I say signed, I either mean... What do you think I mean now about the area being positive or negative? Yeah, good. If it's under the x-axis, it would generate as something that was negative. And if it's above the x-axis, it would generate as something that's positive. So if you integrated between something that went above and below the axis, you'd get some of the areas cancelling out. OK? So that's what we need to be careful of in some of these questions. So it says, given your expanded integration skills, you can now find the area under a greater variety of curves. So there's nothing super different, OK? There's nothing new in terms of the math stuff that we've got here, apart from we're now just going to be applying all the integration skills that we've got. So it says, the diagram shows part of the curve, y equals uh, 9 over the square root of 4 plus 3x. And the region r is bounded by the curve, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 4, as shown in the diagram. Use integration to find the area of r. So it's an integration question with limits, but they just don't tell you what the integration is, even though it's pretty obvious for this first one that we've got here. So we're trying to integrate, and my limits are going to be good. So we'll have 0 and 4. And the thing I'm trying to integrate is 9 over the square root of 4 plus 3x dx. So I've changed it from an area question to a definite integration question that I've got. To be able to do this, any suggestions of either the technique that I will use or something that you might do to this thing that I've got here? How would I integrate that? <coughs> not going to do any substitution. Not going to do, definitely not going to do any ln because the derivative of the, the denominator is not the numerator. <laughs> what was that, sorry? OK, so instead, Let's rewrite it between 0 and 4. It's 9, 4 plus 3x to the power of minus a half dx. This, this is just integrating the functions I think we did in the first lesson or the second lesson of integration, which are functions of the form f of <coughs> ax plus b. Do you remember how you integrate those kind of functions? You just, yeah, you integrate them as normal, and you also do like 1 over a as well. And in this case, a is going to be 3. So for this particular one, if you want to, we could put the 9 outside the front, but I, I don't know if we necessarily need to. Uh, we can do if we want. So I don't know why I've done that. So we're going to have 4 plus 3x. I would increase the power by 1, so the power would become a half. I would divide by the power. What's dividing by a half? Times in by two. But I also need to divide by the three that I have, which is the coefficient of this. Sorry? So I would have to divide it by three. And I've got the nine that was there as well. So you get this expression between 0 and 4. Let's just double check that that does differentiate, because this we did quite a long time ago. So we've got the 9 times the 2 thirds. We would bring the power down, so we would be multiplying it by a half. And the chain rule says we would be multiplying it by 3. And you would reduce the power by 1 to this. So you get the 2's cancelling, and the threes cancel, yep, so you get the 9, 4 plus 3x to the minus a half, which is what we have there. So if you can't remember how to do this, that's going to be something that you're going to need to review. 2 thirds multiplied by 9 is just 6. So you've got 6, 4 plus 3x <coughs> to the half between 0 and 4. When you substitute 4 in here, you've got 4 plus 12, which is 16, 
16 to the power of a half is 4. So the first part is just going to be 6 times by 16 to the half minus 6 times 4 to the power of a half. So that is 6 times 4 minus 6 times 2, which is just 12. <coughs> so the area of that bit is 12. You're going to find this hard to figure out which thing you want to integrate with. Just because we've done integration by parts and we've done tricky bits of integration recently doesn't mean that you should be doing those hard things for every question. This one here was just expect it like you would like you think it should be. You could have done this as a consider then scale as well. If you wanted to, you could have considered 4 plus 3x to the half, and then you could have scaled it appropriately afterwards. If that's something that you find will work, that's probably how I would do that, rather than remembering you just divide by 1 over a. So nothing new, just looking back at things that we've done previously with integration. The next example, again, is nothing new. It's stuff that we will have looked at when you were in year 12, apart from we're now just adding in new functions that goes with this one. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to finish writing that bit off if you haven't finished writing that down. If you have finished writing that down, you can have a look at the skill number nine, which is the area between curves. OK, if you haven't finished writing it, I'll come back later if you need it. So skill number nine says the area between two curves. It says the areas under two curves are this one, f of x, and this one with g of x. So you can see the curve that I've got on the top is f of x, and the curve that I've got on the bottom is g of x. It therefore follows that the area between them, provided that the curves don't overlap each other, that they don't sort of cross over, is the area of the top function minus the area of the bottom function. So I'm just going to really quickly illustrate that for a second. If I do, this is the area of the top function, which I'm going to do in yellow. And if I want to get rid of the area of the bottom function, so this is now going to be underneath g, if I subtract that area, although it hasn't done it super neatly, you can see that the area you get left with is the area in between the two curves. So that's actually what you do if you want to try and find the area between two curves. You find the area underneath the top curve, and you take away the area underneath the bottom curve. But the crucial thing that's going to be important here is instead of working out the areas separately, what you can actually do is combine these two things so that you integrate the functions being subtracted and have the same limit. So you can see what's happened here. Because you're subtracting the areas, the g of x has just come inside the integration part. And that often will make things easier to do as integration. You should not do them separately and then and subtract the areas. You should do them as one single thing. Yes? Um, um, so in order to provide a curve that over that, can we get a question that they do over that? Yeah, so I mean, you might have something that if you had a question that looked like this kind of thing, and it said, find the area of this bit and this bit. You can't just do it from here to here, because at one point, this one is on the top. And then suddenly, it's on the bottom down here. So if you wanted to find these two areas, you would have to do it between A and B and between B and C. But the, the order of the integration would switch, wouldn't it? Because this one, you'd have f of x minus g of x. This one, you'd have g of x minus f of x, because you'll be finding it in two separate sections. The other thing that I don't think I've got mentioned before I get you to do any practice is if you have anything that goes underneath the axis, maybe you had a curve that looked like this. If I said that this was 0, this was 3, and this was 5, you cannot integrate between 0 and 5 here. Why can you not integrate between 0 and 5, Mazuki? It's going to take the bottom area as negative. Yeah, it's going to take this bottom area as negative, and it's actually going to take this area away from this area, so you won't get the total area. How would we, how would we deal with that problem? You do it between 0 and 3, and you do it between 3 and 5. And the 3, good, and you, you modulus the 3 and 5 bit. So it's a similar idea here that you can't just go between A and C. You'd have to do it between A and B and B and C like that. So this is, again, it, it should hopefully just feel like revision of things that you've done from, from year 12 that we've got there. So it does say ensure that you have the top curve minus the bottom curve. So our one says, the diagram shows part of the curves y equals sine 2x 
and y equals sine x cos squared x, where x is between 0 and pi over 2. The region R is bounded by the two curves. When it says bounded by the two curves, it means those curves are the boundary of the area that you're looking for, the outside of it. Use integration to find the area of R. So they've luckily told us that it's between 0 and pi over 2. Um, but it would be pretty quick to find out that it was between 0 and pi over 2 because clearly you can see it's crossing the y-axis here and they both, will, they both cross the y-axis at pi over 2. So we're going to try and integrate between 0 and pi over 2. Which is the one that's on top? Uh, which, uh, which function is on top? Oh, y equals sine 2. So we get sine 2x and because we're going to try and take away, we're going to take away this bottom one which is minus sine x cos squared x. And we're going to do that as one single bit of integration because, um, yeah, because we can, we can just do it as one single bit of integration if we wanted to. Um, there's many, many, many approaches that you can do to this particular bit of integration. Pardon? Would help taking out a factor of sine 2x Well, I can't take out a factor of sine 2x because this doesn't have sine 2x in it. So you can oh, yeah. make sine 2x into yeah, sine I could do that, but I actually think that potentially is going to create some other things. Can I integrate this as it is? Yeah. Yes, I can. I can integrate this just as it is. Can I integrate this as it is? Yeah. We don't have a product rule here. Pardon? Parts, no. Parts will get into one of those infinite parts loops where you're going to get sine, cos, minus sine, minus cos. Equim? Just Say it louder. The reverse, the reverse chain rule. You can integrate this using the reverse chain rule. Why can you use the reverse chain rule, Amika? Yeah. Yes? The Good. The derivative of this thing is this thing. This <laughs> looks like the result of a chain rule differentiation. This looks like it's a result of what do you think has been differentiated to get this roughly? What's the thing we would consider? Not cos squared. Doesn't look like cos squared would differentiate to this. Cos cubed would differentiate to this. Because remember when you differentiate cos cubed, you reduce the power to cos squared and you multiply by its derivative, which is minus sine. So actually, we can go straight. This is, this is the thing you're going to find difficult is to think, what do I do for integration here? So you might like to review some of this. So actually, I'm going to go straight into what the integration is. What's the integral of sine 2x? Almost. Minus a half cos 2x. And then for this thing that we've got here, why don't I do a consider then scale? So for this thing, what should we? We said that we would consider cos cubed x. So if we differentiate it, you would get 3 cos squared x. And the derivative of cos is minus sine. So what do we need to scale it by to get the thing that we want? We need to scale it by a third, because we've got the minus sine cos squared x, but we want it to be a third of that. So it's actually going to be a third cos cubed x. And it's a plus a third cos cubed x between 0 and pi over 2. So we can now substitute pi over 2 into all of these expressions. So that's going to be minus a half cos of 2 times pi over 2 is just cos of pi, plus a third cos cubed of pi over 2. And then we're going to subtract 0 in here, which is going to be minus a half cos 0 plus a third cos 0 Cubed. I'm just going to see if we can squeeze this all in in one place. Where's my page expense? I don't want to go on this over there. So this is where you need to know these things off the top of your head. What is the cos of pi? Cos of pi is minus 1. So this just becomes a half. Yeah, did you say it was minus 1? Cos of pi is, yeah, minus 1. What is cos of pi over 2? 0. So this thing is plus a third of 0. What is cos of 0? 1. So you've got uh, this becomes minus a half, but you're subtracting it, so it becomes plus a half. And again, cos of 0 is 1. When you cube it, you get 1. And you've got a plus a third, but you're minusing it, so you get minus a third. 
So you get a half plus a half minus a third, two thirds. So the area is two thirds of that, that blue bit that we've got there. We've got 20 minutes now. We're going to do half an hour after break as well. The questions I'm wanting you to do, you need to decide what are the techniques that you're going to use. Please do not forget about the reverse chain rule. Um, what other things? You might need to think about trig identities, partial fractions. I mean, I would have, if I were you, I would have my notes open so I can flick through and think which, might, which it might be. You'll also know at the very end, you may not have got this far in your booklets, but I have <coughs> put some of these pages in for you that might give you a hint about how to integrate some of the different things that you've got there as well. So that's at the end of your integration booklets. They may be useful for you to do. The questions that I'm going to ask for you to have a look at Uh, questions five to nine in exercise 11H. These are not easy. Sorry for this being on the last lesson of the year. Not sorry.